In the 1970s, the Indian government decided to create several national parks and construct three dams in the large forest areas of Karnataka, one of India's biggest southern states. A part of this so-called creation was to ensure the protection of the threatened elephants and tigers by displacing the indigenous tribal population from the forests. The government believed that the tribal population was a threat to the wildlife despite this not being the case. The indigenous tribal population had lived in the forest for an eternity, but the government resettled them to areas bordering but outside the forest. Here they were left to themselves under the cover of being socially integrated, yet without being able to speak the official state language, lacking any formal education, and without access to the forest that had provided resources for them for centuries. This displacement had caused great losses for the tribal population due to loss of their natural way of living. Consequently, problems such as lack of education, discrimination, alcohol abuse and child marriage of the girls have ensued. The children are the ones who suffer the most. They are born into extreme poverty and often into a life that contains violence and sexual abuse. The lack of education is the biggest challenge for them. Without it, they don't know their rights, nor options, and they have no real chance of determining their futures. Nasaga Foundation is an NGO who work to give the tribal population their socio-economical, cultural and political rights and entitlements back. They do this through a number of different projects and methods. With their spirulina project, Nasaga supplies pregnant and breastfeeding mothers with nutritional supplements to accompany their daily meals. They also have created pre-primary centers where young children are weighed and their health is monitored. With early interventions of healthy nutrition and growth correction, the tribal children's future holds better possibilities. The Saga Foundation also assists the tribal population legally in battle for reclaiming their land through outreach work in the resettlement areas and through activism on a government level. It is vital that the tribal children's futures contain a formal education that can give them a real chance in a world where they no longer live as they have done for generations. Unfortunately, it isn't realistic to imagine the tribal population coming back and living a life of harmony with the forest. They have to educate themselves alongside the ethnic Indian population. In 2013, the Saga Foundation received funds from Lions Club in Denmark to build a new school building in a more suitable location. The bridge school got a new building with electricity and running water. The children living at the school now have better hygiene, a better diet and are generally healthier with less disease. The building has meant that the children have better circumstances for learning and concentration and thus combating their lack of education. The providing of funding by Lions Club for the building had a domino effect for Nasaga Foundation, who afterwards received donations from a French and German NGO. This meant that they could also build a separate dormitory for the children to sleep in, start an organic vegetable garden and employ more teachers. At Bridge School, the children eat three meals a day. They receive native tribal language classes, they go on field trips, and are kept physically safe and healthy. Also, as the school has been relocated further away from the tribal resettlements, the risk of the children running away, often to become underage workers, has been decreased.
Even though there are major challenges with children dropping out due to either running away or child marriage, there are some success stories. Take Ashoka for example. Ashoka was an 11 year old student in the saga in 2011. Today he is a young man working in Bangalore in the construction industry. This in itself means that he has developed good language skills and that he has the freedom and financial means to move around the large state of Karnataka. He still maintains contact with Nisaga Foundation and visits the children now and then at the school. The teachers say that he has developed a certain sensitivity towards the tribal children and vulnerable individuals in general, as he himself understands what it means to have a rough start in life. In order to create more stories like Ashoka's, Bridge School needs your help. In 2017, the regular donations that supported Bridge School were cut from the Indian government and other international donors. International organizations often donate one-time amounts for a specific purpose. For example, the creation of a new building. In these cases, the Saga Foundation commits itself to use the donation only for the specific purpose. The ongoing problem is that they rarely receive donations for the ongoing running of the school, the overheads, the food, the children's medical treatment, and for new educational materials. At the moment, the Saga Foundation only has the means to cover three teachers' salaries. At present, they are currently using their emergency funds account to cover the daily running costs, but this isn't a long-term solution. If the Saga Foundation do not receive funds to cover the daily running costs of the school, it can ultimately mean that the current students are abandoned. Without food, educational materials, and medical care, the children will be forced to go back to their resettlements to work or marry older men. The cycle of poverty will continue, condemning the children to a future without education or hope. The Saga Foundation desperately needs the means to run Bridge School's costs for the next 12 months. This will provide them time to do more fundraising and at the same time keeping the current children in the school and in education. A small amount of money can make a large difference to one child. With just £10, a child at Bridge School can get free nutritional meals a day for 21 days. You have the option to help the children at Bridge School. If Bridge School can continue running for the next 12 months, more success stories will be told. Girls can remain girls, not child brides and boys will be allowed to develop physically instead of having their bodies abused in illegal child labor. And the tribal population's future can be secured in an ever modernizing India. Unfortunately, returning to a simple tribal life in the future is impossible. The future is education, integration, and preservation of the unique skills that the tribal population possess. The future for the children at Bridge School can be positive and holds hope that they need your help.